so I can help you if, if need be. We'll see. All right. Yeah, well, we're just going to resize the partition, which is easy enough to do. I think it should be. Um, let's see here. Let's as long as that drive is not in use, right? No, he can still shrink it with it in use. Um, you just have to be careful. So that's yeah. what I'm going to show him. And then if need be, like I told him, I can always remote in and do it, and then he can blame me. All right. <laughs> it's, it is worst, what it is, right? Worst comes to worst, I have to reinstall Windows. Right. So if you're um, on your main screen and you right-click the Windows icon, you come up with Disk Management. It's right there. Yep, I see it. That'll bring up the Disk Management window. By the way, anyone joining the stream, I'm helping a friend set up Primo Catch to allow him to use memory and his SSD to help speed up his spinning hard drive for uber performance. Uh, this works well if you have a strong CPU and a decent amount of memory, and even better if you have an SSD with some extra space on it. In my case, I have a dedicated SS, uh, NVMe for it, but that is a little bit overkill. So, um, although, is it really? Is it? Re is there ever really overkill when it comes to computers? No, I, I mean, I'm not Linus, so he's the only person right. I know of that totally Hold overkill on, stuff. Laguna, my dog needs out. <laughs> and he won't wait. <laughs> okay. Bye, sweetie poo. So I have space that I can show him how to do this, I think, right here. Unallocated. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're just chilling here, getting ready to set up a primo catch for a friend. Let's 
still don't know why my Logitech webcam is acting so weird. Let's see where that key. All right, I'm back. All right, so let me know where you're at. I'm kind of. I'm on disk management, looking at my C drive. Okay, so when you look at your C drive, now mine's already been done, right? So, but what you're gonna do is yeah, you probably. Yeah, I see the unaccount allocated on yours. Right. So. And I have a second drive that kind of makes this a little con bit more, con more confusing. But you should have a C drive, and then it probably fills up all of the rest of this bar, right? Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your C drive. You're going to choose Shrink Volume. Okay. It's going to query volume for available shrink space. Exactly. Okay. So this is where, um, once it's done... Uh, determining how much space you can shrink we don't have to shrink it all right so you know we want to leave some space on c it doesn't need to be shrunk down to the very minimum we need some room to grow there but we also want some space for um catching yeah so mine's still querying because i think my c is pretty dang full I only have 19% space free on my C right Yeah, now. mine was pretty much instant. I'm just looking at the uh, total size before shrink, size okay. of available shrink. So how much space do, can they give you? 23 gigs. 23. So I would say let's try 10. You know, Let's start with 10 gigs, see where it's at. You can always shrink some more and increase that. It's no skin. It's very, very easy to do. So, so yeah. That'll leave 10 extra. 10,000, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which will end up being a little bit less than 10. Yeah. And then. So I should go ahead and shrink that? Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know why mine's taking so long. And once it's shrunken, you should see some allocated space. Unallocated. <laughs> Just and waiting. I've got the little circle. Okay. It's probably got to move around a bunch of files. Uh, it might have to move around some files to give you that free space. Well, yeah, because uh, before I ended up uninstalling a bunch of shit, uh, I only had like 14 gigs left. Okay. And with fragmentation, I probably have data all over the di all over the drive. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the for people on the stream who are, aren't quite sure what he's talking about with fragmentation, he's talking about the free space fragmentation. So there's fragmenting of files, but then there's also fragmenting of free space. In, on an SSD, it doesn't matter so much about the fragmenting of the files, except that um, that can still fragment free space and uh, make it difficult to understand how far you can shrink a volume so generally you defragment that free space to allow the shrinking of a drive now if that's a spinning hard drive um that's a whole different animal as well so here i'm there running an... it finished okay and so now you see the unallocated space mm -hmm. go ahead and right click on that click on new simple volume okay click on next click next It'll default to the maximum free space you have available there. Okay, fine. Yep. Um, you could assign the, the letter. If you have the letter L open, that's not a bad letter to choose. Um, okay. You can also choose S for SSD catch or whatever. Anyways, choose a letter. I'm going to let mine be an F here. And then it's going to ask for the file system. If I remember correctly, this shouldn't matter. But if you want to be careful, you can always put fat 32 um, I'm gonna do NTFS because I want to test something um, and then you can label the volume so you could say SSD catch or second catch oh just gives you an idea of what it is you perform the format yep. when you press finish it's gonna say that it's formatting and then you're gonna have that new volume right there there we go SSD cache yep I'm back there you go nice to have you back so, um, do you did you already install Primo Catch? I did, but I still have to reboot before I open it. 
Okay, so, so I will be go ahead and reboot right, right now. Mm -hmm. I was going to eat down here, but I got forced to eat upstairs. Mm hmm. That happens. Only when you live with your grandparents. Right. Oh, I did my taxes. What a pain that is. I get taxed twice. Once for living in the city I live in. And on the same money, I get taxed for working in a different city. It's freaking ridiculous. That fuck? Yeah, it's, it's pretty stupid. That's why I like Canada. Right. Oh, there's going to be a lot to learn about this game. Yeah, Canada just uh, just takes most of your money no matter what, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Crap that rebooted <laughs> fast when there was nothing on there. Right? Helps. All right, so you're back in. Mm -hmm. So now um, you're going to create a catch. Um, so you're going to choose a spinning hard drive. Do I have any extra spinning hard drives where I can show you this? I could create a catch off my uh, USB hard drive. So... Uh, here, I, I want to speed up my USB hard drive. So I go ahead and create a new cache. I choose Hold on, the... I got to open up Primo cache first. Oh, I thought you already did that. Weak nope, sauce. I, uh, I went into Discord first thing. <laughs> nope, no problem, no problem. Okay, Primo cache is open. Yep. And in fact, before you do that, I'm going to show you something else. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm sitting here with Primo cache open, and I've got your stream open. Awesome. So in Primo Catch, you're going to have an area that says Manage Level 2 Storage. Um, hold on. Up at the top? Yeah, I know pop-up is a... But no pop-up is showing up for me that says it's a le Manage Level 2 Cache, but it's the same icon. Yep. Click on that icon. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have probably nothing in this Level 2 Storage list. Yeah. So you're going to correct. create Level 2 Storage. Now this, okay. is, this is where you have to be careful. Make mm -hmm. sure you choose that, uh, and that's why the label helps. Choose the SSD one that you just created. Cache S. Exactly. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it's going to create another storage label. You might have to change it if you're creating more than one. Since this is my second one, I think I have to make another name for it. So I'm just going to. But I'm good with leaving the name alone if I'm only creating one. Exactly. You shouldn't have to change that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can just go ahead and hit format once I've selected that. Exactly. It's going to let you know that all the data is going to be lost on that heart, on that drive. Well, you just created yep. it, so there's nothing there anyway. So click yes. There you go. Volume is successfully converted to a level two storage. Exactly. And now you're going to see it in that list. I have awesome. two of them now. Yep. You have one. So, um, and when you click on it, just to help you understand, um, when you click on it, it'll tell you how many partitions that you've used out of that. So on this, mm -hmm. you'll notice I have three different catches that are using different capacities of my level two. Yep. Not important right now, but down the road, as you add this functionality to more spinning hard drives or your USBs like I'm doing, um, you might want to delete one of these to make room for the next catch that you're making if you're no longer using mm -hmm. a specific one. So there you go. So now you're going to go ahead and create your new catch. I'm going to do it off my USB drive just to show you. You're going to do it off of whichever hard drive the game is on to speed it up. Which will be my Western Digital Red, my game drive. Correct. So you can do it one of two ways. You can speed up the whole hard drive. So that means all partitions that are on the hard drive by clicking the uh, hard drive icon. Or you can speed up just the, the specific partition. Um, this yeah. one only has one on this one, but if you notice, if I click just L or just any one of these, it will let yeah. you just do one partition out of the whole hard drive. It just does it differently. Yeah, my entire game drive is just one big game install partition, so... There you go. Perfect. So you select Quick it and... Before you go on here. Sure. What exactly are we doing with the hard drives here? So what we're doing is we're allowing Primo Catch to um, implement a catching structure that allows his spinning hard drive to basically act faster than a SSD mm -hmm. hard drive. Oh, okay, and that's not just a cold in the middle. M dot twos, right? Come again? Then like it's gonna be put them in the nuker for thirty seconds. A standard SSD or like the new M dot two drives? Uh, pretty much all the drives. Now it depends on the the stuff that you're using to speed it up, but pretty much it's gonna be faster than most most any hard drive out there. 
except for maybe PCI Express hard drives. Which is the M.2 drives, right? Yes and no. M.2, Not all M.2, M.2 drives are, the same. are its own interface, but yeah. NVMe, there's a difference between NVMe and just M.2. Some M.2s are still actually running as SATA, and some are running as the new N- NVMe, yeah. which is the fastest. Currently. Yeah, that's the one that I just got so. that my games on. But the funny thing is, system. the funny thing is, even with that fast NVMe, you might still benefit from this because you can lessen how many uh, writes you have to your hard drive, and put more of your running um, information into memory, which is still okay. going to be faster than your NVMe. So. It's not going to be the same sort of performance gain that um, he's going to get. He's going from a spinning hard drive to this catching system, which is going to be as fast, if not faster, than a VME. But there are still benefits to be had. It's like putting a, you know, having a, a Ferrari and then adding you know, um, better drilled rotors. So it's going to improve what you already have, but it may not be as noticeable as if you were upgrading from, say, a, a Volkswagen Beetle. You know, (laughs) you'll notice a bit of a difference there. So back to the task at hand. Yeah. You select the hard drive that you want to catch. Now, you can catch multiples in the same catch scheme. So I could catch all of these at once. But I like to break them up into specific catches so that I can tune that catch to the size and whatever I'm doing with that hard drive. So here's the hard drive that I'm speeding up, that USB. Mm -hmm. And then this is where... Um, you can choose how you're catching it. If you only care about read performance, then you can do read. Um, oh, you see, mine just skipped that screen. Really? What did it yeah. take you to? Directly to what? Directly to configure parameters. So cache size, more parameters, level 2 cache, enable defer, right? I've got a bunch of different options on here. Okay, so that's interesting. I don't know why it did that for you, but it doesn't matter because you can still change everything on the next one. This in-between screen will just... Oh, it's, that's, uh, that's where you choose your preset configuration. Exactly. So it presets everything, and then you can choose. But on this screen, you can still change it all around anyways. I so... have a button at the very... Mine must be a newer version because instead of that, I have mm-hmm. a button down at the bottom that says Hold preset on. configurations... I can okay. open that up, and then I can choose from that list of configurations. Oh, well, I'm going to have to make sure I have the most up-to-date one, then. I am registered. I've bought it, so I should have the most up-to-date. I'll have to check that out. But, yes, same so thing. So, I, I want to accelerate read and write? Um, I would, for gaming, because you want to accelerate how fast it's writing the stuff, and then you also want to accelerate how fast you're reading it. Now, if you don't care so much about the write, and the read's the more important thing, then you could just do read. It doesn't really matter. You do lose a little bit for doing read and write, but not that much. So this is, you. do you have a page after you choose the preset that looks like what you're seeing on my screen right now? That's exactly what I'm looking at right now. Okay, perfect. The only difference is underneath memory overhead in that bottom bar where you have next and uh, back. Mm-hmm. Over on the left side, I have the preset configurations button where I can choose a preset. Gotcha. Okay, and that's kind of what I have here. So that could be uh, because of a couple reasons. It's your first catch, so maybe that's why it's mm-hmm. showing up that way. Or it's a newer version that has uh, cooler options. Whoa, up at the top, you see mine says 2.4.0. What does yours say? Mm-hmm. 3.0.9. There you go. So that's the difference. Um, so I'm going to get even better performance here shortly. So <laughs> <laughs> so here's an important part. When you set this up, um, look and see what it does for the OS management. It might try to max out how much mem- free memory it's using. You know, yeah, within I, reason. I only have 16 gigs of RAM, and it's trying to uh, use 5,000 megs. Right. So you might drop that down to 2 or 4 and see how good it does with that and kind of I'll play that by ear. I'll drop it down to four. Yeah. You know, if you notice that you're having a lot of things, if you're running out of memory, then you can always bump it down a little bit more. And you can type values in there as well. Um, the So I'm going to put two because this, no, actually, I'm just going to put one because this is just my little USB hard drive. Um, and then you can also choose different special um, options here. I don't, you probably don't need to, so don't mess with it. But Level two cache, size max, yeah. Yes. Under so, more parameters, though, I'm noticing differences like block size. Yes. So on the level two, since you're only speeding up one hard drive, do max. If if mm-hmm. in the future you want to speed up a USB or you want to speed up your operating system hard drive as well or 
anything here save read and writes on a certain hard drive you could then choose an amount on the ll2 on the a second level catch and then you could use the rest on the other catch so you could split it up amongst ca uh, different catch strategies so that's what i was showing you with the deleting partitions earlier i'm um, also noticing different options because you've selected a different type of drive you've selected a removable device so I just there are different options on my screen okay so and yet again i think a lot of that has to do with the version you have a full version above me so um <laughs> but either way um the block size the smaller the block size, the better performance you're going to get at the cost of more CPU usage. So it doesn't hurt to start as small as possible or whatever it recommends. It's going to recommend that block size depending on how big the hard drive is that you're catching and try to break it up that way. Yeah, it's recommending 16 kilobyte 16, block size, which is pretty fine. So, you know, try that first. If you don't have, if you're not maxing out your CPU and you feel like you could use a little bit more disk speed, you can always bop, bump it down to eight or four. Um, okay. Then catch strategy, it probably automatically set it. I don't know if you still have that option with that newer version, but I don't because I have the preset button. Yep. All right. So you did whatever you did. That's fine. Do you have defer write? Yes, I do. It's enabled deferred write with a latency of 10 seconds. Yep, which is pretty good. So remember, deferred write is a double-edged sword. It's good because if there is something that's written that doesn't stay written, it's just a temporary read and write, it won't actually get written to your hard drive and waste that write. You know, because you know all hard drives have a limited, no matter if it's an SSD or a... Um, a spinning hard drive, they do have a limited amount of writes. It's just it's usually yep. so high that it doesn't really matter um, for everyday usage. So, but so here's the the double-edged sword. If you were to crash and um, lose power, then whatever's in that write isn't going to get written, which could cause some problems. You may have to do some recovery. Okay. Is it that big of an issue? No, it's the same as unplugging your computer at any given time by accident. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but it is something to keep in mind. I usually don't go above the 300 uh, second limit. And 60 is a pretty good sweet spot because mm -hmm. it gives it a whole minute to figure out whether that read or write is necessary to actually write. But um, it's not so long that you have that, you know, the longer it goes, the bigger chance it is that you would ever uh, lose power and lose some sort of data. And then the last thing is this is more important if you're running uh, your operating system one, but it could be used for other ones, prefetching the lapse catch. So just keeping the catch data there so that when you boot back up, um, it's not catching everything every single time. So I generally keep that on. Um, doesn't really matter. So then you click start and it mm -hmm. will tell you that it succeeded or created. And then you'll see your catch there. And you'll see all the information about the catch and how it's... Now, what about the option to start at Windows boot? Uh, all prefetch starts after a period of idle time since you log... Okay, no, never mind. Yeah, I was going to say, generally, you don't want that on. It'll increase your boot time, and for most things, is not necessary. All right, looks like it's done. Yep, so then if you have that hard drive highlighted in the catch, you'll see all the data real time there at the bottom you'll see your catch hit right as it starts to go up and down you'll see your deferred blocks how many blocks what the trimmed blocks are how many writes that it realized it didn't need to write to the hard drive they were temporary writes and mm -hmm. each of those trimmed blocks is a saved write to your hard drive so that's extended the life of whichever hard drive whether it was ssd or hard drive or, or uh spinning and um you'll also be able to see the l2 storage how much you've how much you have how much you've actually used um, that can help you write the free catch here. So right now I have a full mm -hmm. 27 gigabytes of, of L2 and the full one gigabyte of memory is still all free because I haven't done anything with the, the USB hard drive yet. But as soon as I go ahead and open up the USB hard drive to look at it, what was it, which one did I do? E, E. So if I open up E, you're going to see all of a sudden, boom, the catch is starting to use use data there is checking the deferred block so i have some read and writes that it just because i looked at it it has some writes that could be written to it and um it's going to start uh, showing up on that catch so as i look at different things on there portable apps and um okay. whatnot it's going to be super super fast if you do now i'm being weird and catching a usb right 
But it's not all that weird because if you think about it, transferring big video files, doing stuff like that, if you want to just use it off your USB, that actually is fine. I don't have to transfer this to another hard drive because it's doing all that Either catch. Either that or playing like a lot of media right off of a USB. Yep, it could be a very positive thing. But remember, you have that deferred right, so you want to make sure you flush it and eject it correctly if you're going to actually take the USB out. So generally, okay. you leave the USB in, um, you know, and th that's a USB you're expecting to be in there for a while, and then you want to kind of stop the catch if you can before you pull it out, because that's, you know... Okay, I don't really have to worry about that, though, exactly. because I'm caching a, a permanent drive. Exactly, yep. But I just wanted to mention it, since I showed you how to do it. Um, so you can pause the catch, you can start the catch, you can flush the catch, you can look at the catch configuration all through here. So nothing's set in stone. Okay. And that, my friend, should be that. So if you, how many monitors? Do you have two monitors? Yes, I do. I've got, I'm leaving the window open and I'm about to launch Anthem. Yeah, launch Anthem. Remember, the first one, may, you may not see any uh, improvement, but when you launch it again, when you launch different things, you'll probably notice that it's probably going to have a much faster thing. Also, if you look at your read and write speeds, I have um, IO bit performance monitor from their... Oh, what's what do they call it advanced system care i think it's a free thing you have to be careful to not let them install bundles that they use to um you know fund their operation but it's actually kind of cool because it gives you the performance monitor and if i go under disk here you remember how i was telling you oh anthem's reading at this many megabytes a second i wasn't getting that from the task manager because the task manager um is painful and annoying sometimes to, to get that sort of information from i was actually just and it, lies. Right <laughs> and, and it lies to you yes so i was looking at that from here i was watching um my disc uh read and writes from here and it was giving me a good idea of what, what i was looking at um read and write wise um which is pretty cool it shows how much uh anthem really taxes your disc or your uh, primo catch when you're doing something like that so load it up let's see what happens dude i'm i want to see i'm gonna uh see why i don't have any updates here <laughs> why hasn't this auto updated yeah i'm logging in right now so all right damn yeah this Hopefully updated this at the end of the year cut down time on loading screens i think it will definitely the idea for sure i'm gonna update mine right now i'm gonna stop the stream guys hey tuna what's up brah yeah, I'm uh, showing a friend how to um, speed up their spinning hard drives faster than SSDs, basically, if all goes directly, or at least as fast. I, you know, I'm always very careful about what I promise with something. I can give you my results and how I've done it, but it's going to be different on everyone's system. And I have a Ryzen um, 2700X, so it just multitasks like a beast. Some computers even higher end cpus don't multitask as well as it does so your results are always going to vary that goes for everyone out there in the uh cybersphere that being said it should get better as long as your cpu has the ability and you have a little bit of extra memory on hand the extra ssd is just a bonus just a little mm, yep. tastiness well i'm i'm in all right heading up to uh the forge to get in my javelin Awesome possum. Primo catch, primo catch, primo catch. Primo so I guess if you guys want to send me an invite, go for it. I'm about to. I'm updating my primo catch, actually. I was going to say, um, <laughs> I, what I want the newer version. Just hop into free play by yourself. Uh, jump out, run through the vegetation and whatnot, spin around, look around, see where your IG spots are at, and then you know, get the invite. Preload the, pre the map yeah. into the cache before I start joining you guys. Good idea. Right. Yep. And yep. that yep. way, when you've got multiple people in a party, be it one other person or a full party squad. Um, then we can see how slow you really are again. With the, with the different <laughs> effects from different weapons, you're going to be caching like a crazy man right off the bat. You don't want to have to do the environment also on top of that. Yep. Yep. And we'll see if I'm full of crap. I'll be back. Yeah, well, so far, it's written two gigs to my uh, level two cache. That's right. So what it's doing is it's using your SSD to speed up that spinning hard drive in addition to using your memory to speed up the hard drive. So, I mean, that's a plus right there. 
I'll be back. Restarting the stream shortly.